I wanted to see how easy it is for a very amateur photographer with relatively cheap equipment and no experience photographing birds to get some half decent shots of a kingfisher. I've seen a video on YouTube about how simple it is to photograph these birds using their technique of placing a branch or perch in the middle of the river and waiting for the kingfisher to land on it. If they fly past a new perch, they will apparently automatically land on it as it's completely irresistible to them. It's like a magnet. Well, let's see. A difficulty I thought I might have is that where I am on the River Thames, the river is quite wide uh, and there are multiple overhanging trees, so literally hundreds of potential branches for the bird to perch on over a stretch of a few hundred metres. After seeing the kingfisher fly up and down the river on multiple occasions whilst walking my dog, I learnt two or three areas where it would land. My idea was to place a perch close to these areas and hope for the best. For info, I have a Nikon D5500, 5, 500, I don't know how you say it, and a Sigma 200 to 600 mil contemporary lens. Uh, I couldn't afford the sport version. It was way too expensive. I set out early one morning before work and on my way found a suitable branch to use as a perch, so I nicked it. Came from someone's garden, but it didn't look like they wanted it. The first thing to do was to set up my hide and tripod with the camera so I would be ready. The kingfisher flies up and down this stretch quite frequently so I guess the worst thing I could do was to place the branch in the water before setting up my gear and have the kingfisher land on it and then not return. Apparently if they don't like the new perch they won't come back which sounds fair enough. With the camera and hide in place I was then ready to get the branch into the river. What I had forgotten though were my swimming trunks. After getting quite wet, the branch was set in place. Needless to say, I sat wet in my pop-up hide for 90 minutes with no sight of Kingfisher. I'd also say don't attempt this if you don't have a few hours spare. A couple of days later, I went out after work and attempted to place a new branch in another stretch of the river further upstream where I had also seen a Kingfisher in recent days. I couldn't get the branch to stay put and the river was way deeper than I had anticipated. I also whacked my foot, cut it open on a large rock whilst treading water and also got some fishing line wrapped around my leg. I then gave up and went home. Another day and third time lucky. This day I had more time and the conditions were perfect. It was sunny and calm and I had a new idea, my paddleboard. This should allow me to place the perch in the river with ease, no getting wet, no cut foot and no fishing line. In this location, which was again further upstream, there is a small inlet with a large white wooden post, as you can see in the distance here. I'd seen the kingfisher on this post a few times, so, so my idea was to place the branch next to this post. As always, I set up the hide and camera first, then the perch, and then sat and waited. I hadn't heard the kingfisher that day, but had seen it the previous day on the white post, so I was fairly confident if I gave it enough time, it would come. Then after around an hour it landed on the tree about 10 meters beyond the white post and my perch. It sat there for about five minutes I think and whilst it was really beautiful to watch and observe I really wanted it to land that little bit closer on my perch so I could get some good shots. This tree was about 20 meters away and too far for my contemporary lens. I wish I'd bought the sport version. I was fairly confident it would land on the white post and it soon did. Whilst now right in front of me, the post was too high and the angle wasn't great. My new perch was only about one meter from here, so I was sure it would land on it. I think it flew away for a few seconds and then came back to land on my perch. It was about 40 minutes before sunset now, so I knew the light was already starting to fade. That was something I had already thought about, um, the time of day and where the sun would set. So I knew if it did land on my perch, it would get some decent light. It landed there, I think, twice and dived into the water once off of my perch, but I don't think it caught anything. Here are a few stills from this session. Uh, they're not perfect, but I'm really pleased with them. Now I know the technique works, I'll hopefully have many more successful photo sessions to come. It also seemed like a good idea at the end to take the perch back down when I left, as I figured it would be more likely to land on it next time if it was new again. 
Anyway, I wanted to share my experience and tips and hopefully it helps anyone who is interested in photographing this beautiful bird. Also, if anyone knows whether this is male or female, please leave a comment as I really don't know. I thought maybe it was a juvenile female as there's a bit of red on the lower beak appearing in some of the photos.